All right, so let's say we have a bunch of synced objects that people have tossed around and we want a really good way to just reset them back to their original position. Fortunately, that's pretty easy, especially with the VRC object sync component, which is what allows us to sync things in different places. But there are a couple steps that we have to go through to do that. I've set up a frankly over-engineered chess set here in order to actually like showcase this. Every one of these pieces is a synced object, but I also set up a little script on each one to snap it to a specific rotation and position so that it actually matches the chess set. C completely unnecessary for this video, but we won't be using that at all. This will just be the visual explanation of a way to implement this. What we are going to be using is this box right here, the reset button. So we need to set up an udon behavior to go on this to actually do our resetting. So let's start by doing a add component udon behavior. And we could do new program here, but I'll put it somewhere random. So we'll just make our script in our folder. So we go to VRChat udon, udon graph program asset. And I'll just call this respawn objects. Now, if we go back to our reset box here, I'll just put the graph into the slot on here, and then we actually have access to our graph and everything. Let's open this up and get started. We hit open Udon graph, it'll open up here. And the first thing that we need is actually our group of object syncs that we're going to be respawning. So in our variables, we'll do object sync, and you see we have VRC object sync, and the one with brackets is an array, so that lets us have multiple. Obviously, new variable isn't very obvious what this is, so I'll just call this object syncs. In a drop down here, you'll see the public button, and if we hit that and press compile, you'll see it shows up in our inspector right down here. Right now, there's nothing in here, but we have 32 chess pieces, so I'll just set this to be 32 and fill these in in a bit. For now, I'll press shift space to full screen my graph, and we can get started. Since we're respawning everything when somebody clicks this, we're going to use the interact event. So hit space to search and type interact and event interact is what we want. Now we basically want to say for every single one of these, respawn it. But in order to do that, we're first going to have to understand ownership. Ownership is the way that VRChat handles syncing information across to other players. Basically, one player is in charge of this information or that information and every single synced object is owned by, typically, the person who was the last person to pick it up. If no one picked it up, it's just the person who's been in the world the longest. Now, we're able to declare specifically who we want to be the owner for one thing or another, and we're going to do that so we become the owner of every single one of the objects in order to actually respawn it, because we can't declare, oh, this object has respawned, if we aren't the person who is in charge of declaring information for that object. Might, be a, might sound a little bit complicated, but basically it's just one more step in our process that needs to happen. So we're going to do this for every single one of our objects, so we're going to be using a for loop. We'll type in for, and you see here this gives us three things, a start, an end, and a step. Step basically means we're counting up by one, we don't want to change that. And we want to pass this the number of VRC object syncs that we actually have. So we'll drag out from object syncs and we'll drag out from here to do length. And we want to do the first one, get space length. All the others don't use them, not, not for this implementation. Now that we have this number, we can plug this into end. And this will basically count up from zero until 32 is like our length of here. So it'll actually stop when it gets to 32, which is what we want because we only technically have 31 because we start at zero. If we plug this in here, this for loop will run whenever we click on this. Now that we have our for loop set up, we actually needed to do something. So we're going to get another reference to our object syncs over here, just so there's less noodly mess, and drag out from here and type get. Get allows us to say a specific number, and like if we say five, it'll get us the fifth object sync in that array, and we can do something with that. We're going to plug this into here, and that basically lets us do this code that comes out of body for every single one of the things that we're doing. And again, firstly, we need to become the owner of this object. And since syncing is done on a game object basis, we need to get the game object from this object sync. So we can drag out from here and type game object, 
the first thing that shows up is get game object. Now we need to pass this into a event called networking set owner. And this takes two variables, a player that will become the owner of it and the object that we're respawning. Obviously we put our game object into here. Now we need to get the local player or the person who pressed this button, i.e. you. Fortunately, that's the same as networking set owner. We just do networking local player. Then we can plug this variable into player and stack everything up neatly in a way that might be readable. <laughs> now that we've become the owner of this object, we just need to respawn it, which is as simple as dragging out from where we're already getting this object and typing respawn. Just plug that into right after set owner. And there we have it. That's our entire graph and it's respawned. Really all of the work of this graph is just becoming the owner of this object right here so that we can safely declare what is happening to this object. Shift space again to unfull screen. And now we get to do the fun part, which is going to our scene and manually dragging in every single one of these things. Oh, did I say fun? I, I didn't mean that. Sorry, I lied. I'll probably speed through this. And there we go. That's all of our synced objects placed in this array. And now we can just hit play and test it out. I'm using the creator companion right now. Uh, and that comes with client sim, VRChat's built-in way of testing during play mode. If you're not using the creator companion, be sure to be using CyanMU. It's literally the same thing, but client sim is him rewriting all of it, so that's better. Let's close the menu. And if we run up to our stuff here, you'll see that I can move them around and you see how it snapped earlier as I was explaining. And it, the rotations also snap to 45 degree angles. So if I slightly rotate that, it snaps forward. But obviously what we're here for is respawning it. So let's say, oh, we finished the game. We can hit reset and everything goes back to its original positions. Now, if you're just working on graph, that's it. That's all you needed to do. But now I'm gonna go ahead and set this up in Udon Sharp as well, because that's another system people might wanna use. So I can leave play mode and let's go ahead and actually make our script here. Same as the object respawn graph, we just do right click and create, but click U Sharp script. And I'll type respawn objects. And since we already have one here for graph, I'll just call this sharp. Now you don't need to call this sharp, obviously, if you're not doing the graphs one, but this just lets me distinguish it. Now, since we've made a new script here, we just have to let it compile. And by the time that that's done, we can go ahead and double click this and open it up in our editor. First though, let's actually open up our Udon graph page for the respawn objects, because this will let us compare directly between what we've done here and what we're going to do in Udon Sharp. All right, with both of these open, uh, we can actually get to work. Now, the first thing that I always do when making a Udon Sharp script or any script for that matter is put it in a namespace because if two people have the same script named something uh, like button two or something like that, then it's just going to break. But if you put them in a namespace, then it's safely concealed within that. So you just do that by typing namespace and I'll call this Falcon because it's mine open curly bracket and close curly bracket to hold the whole script. Now, if anyone else writes respawn object sharp is not going to conflict with mine unless they're, I guess, intentionally putting it in my namespace in which leave me alone. <laughs> now we don't need our start event, so we can go ahead and clear out all that. And the first thing that we want to do as we did over here is make our variable. So we're going to do a public VRC object sync but as you see, it's not actually filling here. So we need to import the namespace that this is actually from. Now you use namespaces up here instead of declaring your script in one. So we'll just do using vrc.sdk3.components. And that's the namespace that the VRC object sync variable is inside of. It's not super intuitive, but some IDEs will autofill this, such as Rider, or if you have different plugins for the one that you're using, it should work perfectly fine. Otherwise, you just have to remember this one. Now we need our object sync to be an array, so open close square brackets, and I'll just call this object syncs yet again. We're going to be using the interact event, and since it's a VRChat event, we can get an autofill by doing public override and type 
interact and we can just hit enter and it autofills the whole thing. We won't be using base.interact. In fact, it will break if we try to do that. So we'll just clear that line and we're going to start up our for loop. Now, for loops are visually different than they are in the graph because they're not a box, but I'm going to type this out here quick and then explain what it's doing. Now, to quickly explain what the for loop is doing, we're making a new variable, i, which is the same thing as the start over here, which is just a zero. Step is going up by one, which is what the i here is. Now, i plus plus, that's just a shorthand for i equals i plus one, or i plus equals one, and i plus plus is just the shortest way of writing that. i less than object sinks dot length is basically the same thing as the end point. So while i is less than object sinks dot length, we increase i by one, and then we run this again. Basically the same thing as it works over here, just visually explained differently. So the first thing we do is set ourselves to be the owner. So we'll do networking dot set owner. And of course, first we pass the networking dot local player, comma, and then we're going to get our current object sync. So object syncs square brackets i dot game object. And there we go. That's us getting the game object from the current object sync that we have and setting it to be owned by the local player or the person who clicked the interact event. Next up, we just do object syncs square brackets i dot respawn and that is of course a reference to the object sync that we're using and just telling it to respawn and this is actually our whole script this is completely done so control s to save and if we head back into unity we can just go and assign everything the same way we did earlier now on our reset button you see we still have our array here of our 32 object syncs but we don't actually need our graph one at all we just need our u sharp one so what we can do is we can actually drag all of these in at once instead of manually doing it. So first we just lock the inspector. So if I click on something else, it doesn't change that. Uh, it's just done by clicking the lock button up here. And we can shift click all of the objects that have an object sync on them and drag it into the name object syncs and it populates it completely right there. I've already tested it working here in the graph with the editor. So I'll just boot it up into VR chat here to show it working with Udon Sharp. All right, load it in. We can run up to our chess set and I can drag our pieces around and they snap the same way that they did in the editor. But now that we have a bunch of them in different positions, I can go and click the reset button and they all get snapped back to their original positions. There you go. That is how to do object respawning for synced objects in both Graph and Udon Sharp. I know it's been a while since the last video, but the chess set here and the respawning system will be up on my Patreon. Uh, the chess set will be up on Booth, and I hope you enjoyed. We'll see you next time.